Hello again from the Recasting Presidential History Conference at the University of Virginia's Miller Center, and I'm here with Kathy Jo Martin, who is a uh, professor of political science at uh, Boston University. And uh, Professor Martin, you presented a paper about uh, taking a comparative approach to uh, business manufacturers and their relationship with the regulatory structure in the state. That's right. Correct. And what can you and what can you tell us about that? So, well, the basic uh, book that I've just written, the political construction of business interests, really tries to understand why it is that employers sometimes support human capital investment policies and policies more generally that sen seem to invest in even the most marginal members of society because they view that putting people outside the labor force or on the dole is simply a waste of human talent. Mm -hmm. And can you give us some examples of the of, of the development of, of this of this regulatory state in the United States and compare that to what happened in Denmark, which you discussed at, in the panel? Okay, so one of the things I've been interested in is the role of business organizations in developing the welfare state. So in Denmark, what you find is business and labor have very very. Uh, strong encompassing labor organizations and starting at the end of the 19th century these organizations have been deeply involved in the construction of social policies that have implications for productivity and competitiveness these organizations continue to work on these issues because they like the chance to have control over the programs. They tailor the programs to meet the skill needs of their own workers and consequently they've gotten deeply invested in these social programs. In America, both business uh, business has been much more hostile to these programs. Labor's not very well organized and instead what we've had is the state creating regulation from the top down, not giving either business or labor much say in the evolution of the programs, and consequently there's less support for these social programs, and we've ended up doing a lot more social programs through the tax code, because the tax code is an easier way politically to get the kinds of things done that we want done. Consequently, they're deep uh, inequalities in America. Some people get these tax deductions, some people don't get these tax deductions. Uh, the programs themselves in Europe tend to be much more universal, less subject to, to uh, the capture by private interests. Um, they have a lot more support for those reasons as well. They're simply viewed as more legitimate. Is this a part of a broader social acceptance in Europe of, and, and I, I don't mean of regulation per se, but of a welfare state in, in its broadest sense. In fact, I think it doesn't have a lot to do with political culture. If you go back to the end of the 19th century, there was enormous class warfare in Europe as well. And I'm mainly talking about uh, Northern Europe. I'm not talking about places like Greece and Spain that have so many problems right now. And so if you look at what's going on in uh, the labor movement, um, you have horrible strikes, you have um, um, in Denmark, you have provisional governments. They can't create any kind of permanent budget. Um, there, there's major class conflict and major inner party conflict. And what happens is very interesting because at one point, the right party decides that uh, with coming democratization, higher levels of democratization, they may well face a coalition of farmers and labor and lose all political power in their parliament. And they decided instead, at that point, to create these private channels for policy making uh, through these very strong business organizations and labor unions. And they think, well, well, we'll win more if we're just fighting with labor than if we're fighting with farmers and labor organized against us. And so they do it to evade democratization. But the long-term ramifications are that they've created the most egalitarian societies in the world that nonetheless have very, very high rates of um, employment, uh, economic growth, uh, standards of living. So they sort of have it all. <laughs>